I, l- I love the premise of the show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think, I think it's dumb people talking about, about smart, smart shit. shit. Oh, we go where we're not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlamagne the guy. Andrew Show. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for joining us for another week. And today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace from websites and online stores, the marketing tools and analytics. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Let's start this show. Let's we back, it. baby. We back. I ain't gonna lie. This fucking invisible line kicking my ass. Yeah, it seems like you keep pushing it. Because you know you got to switch it every two weeks. Yep. And when you first... Yeah, when you first put it in, after every two weeks, that's when that shit hurts the most. Oh, this is man. Day one of the new tray, like day two. Yeah, day two of the new tray. Maybe day two. Day yeah, day no day day. I put it in yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So day two. And are you doing twenty hours a day or whatever the fuck they say? Trying it. Yeah, you know. I never did that shit. It's, yeah, it's like you need a little breather. Yeah, just sleep in it. All I did is go to sleep in it. Really? Oh no, I wear it all day. But I, like I say, if I eat dinner at night, I don't put it back on because I know at night I'm gonna have me a drink. Yeah. I'm gonna do it edible. I'm gonna get the munchies. Yeah. So I ain't got time to be taking it in and out. You know what yeah. I mean? So I just yeah. sit there, let it breathe for a minute. Yeah. And like you said, put it back in before I go to sleep. Yeah. Are I you doing that. edibles every night? No, I only do edibles on weekends. Oh, okay. I'm not a drug addict. I don't need edibles to survive, to <laughs> cope with life. <laughs> you know who I bumped into yesterday? A drug addict, clearly. No. If this is what you're using to seg into it. No, but uh, but uh, she's fucking great. Is that Tiffany Haddish? Okay. Yeah. Okay, my girl. Love yeah. Tiffany. She's, well, you she, saw her at, she's in New York? Yeah, she's in New York. What the fuck? How she in New York? She ain't hit me. What she was uh, doing in New York? Uh, she may be shooting something. Okay, okay. And then, uh, but yeah, I bumped into her last night at this bar and, and she, I haven't like had like a one-on-one conversation with her before. She was talking to me about you recently. Bro, she is a force. Duh. She is an absolute, <laughs> yes. unstoppable yes. force. All energy. Absolutely. I mean, you got to read her book. You should read her book, The Last Black Unicorn. I want to. No, you should read her book. I, I'm going to tell you, the first time I ever got turned on to Tiffany was Neil Brennan and Moshe Cash's podcast, The Champs. I had met Tiffany yeah. years, years ago when we were filming a uh, guy. Was it? No, it wasn't Guy. It was before Guy Code. Me and Duval were filming. Uh, Hood State of the Union? No, it was like, okay, it was like a little bit right after Hood State of the Union. We first started doing stuff with Viacom. I think it was like one. Of, what's that show VH1 used to do? Best two girls, one maybe cut. best week ever. One of them <laughs> shit like that. Yeah, it was yeah, one of them yeah. talking head shows. Yeah, yeah. So I met Tiffany way back then, but I heard her champs interview in like 2014, 2015. And when you hear that interview, you like, oh, she, yo, she's charged up, man. She's charged up. I mean, it was yeah. unbelievably entertaining talker. Oh, so y'all was kicking it, kicking it. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, no, that's we dope. were just chopping it up. Nah, she good people, man. She was funny too, man. I'm not gonna lie. Like, nah, she, she good walked people. in, she goes, <laughs> she walked in, she was up, what's up, ugly? <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> she, goes, she goes, nah, I gotta tell, I gotta tell these motherfuckers they ugly. That's how I get laid. <laughs> you tell the motherfucker they ugly they fall in love with you and then she turns to the group of people that you should with she's like ain't he ugly <laughs> like, what the fuck is happening all right she's now? doing is telling you she want to fuck you <laughs> no no I mean, I can't That's exactly what she just said. I, can't blame I gotta her. tell you no, no, that no. you're ugly because I want to get laid. All no, no, that's no. The, all she really was saying was I want to fuck you. Nah, she's just busting balls. But I will say one thing: she's so funny. She's she wants like, to bust your balls. She might want to <laughs> bust my balls. No, but she was. Uh, she said she says she's very uh, protective over you. That's my girl, man. Because she, she loves your wife so much. That's that's what she said. They any all girl say. comes up to you, she gonna fuck them up. That's what. Oh man, that, she says that she I does can, it. I can tell y'all a story right now. Say it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but she ain't lying and I'm gonna tell you something I remember one I can tell this story I, I don't gotta say who the girl was but one night we was at some, it was something what Tiffany had just hosted Tiffany had just hosted some award mm-hmm. show and we was at the after party mm-hmm. and I was in LA mind you this is me and my faithful days I'm faithful now yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying and my wife wasn't there and this young lady was you know being Pressing. a little too touchy feely but what she didn't know was not only was Tiffany Haddish in the party Alicia Renee was in the party too. And somehow or another, not even knowing, Tiffany came from one side and Alicia came from the other side. And it was like, um, you know he's married, right? Mm -hmm. You know he's married. Like, Mm -hmm. but not like on some, you know he's married. Like, yo, you know he's married, right? Yeah. Like, hey, man, thank you. (laughs) She did that shit with me last night. Really? Yeah. 
because I'm so oblivious. Like when when girls compliment my stand up, I think they really like my stand up. Mm-hmm. So like <laughs> this girl's like, I really love watching all your shows, and I'm like, yeah, two things got can be good true. Taste. Shows, two things can be true. I guess I'm more arrogant about my art than I am about my face. Yeah, I'm sure every artist that got laid music wise or comedy has gotten the same thing. I love your stand up. I love your song. I also like to suck your dick. See, they don't say that shit straight up. If they said that shit straight up, I would know. But she's saying, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but if she's coming saying she loves the stand up, and I'm like, oh God, yes, there we go. Yeah. This, this girl's a great sense of humor. And uh, she came up one last time, and Tiffany just stepped in with the Heisman. Was like, uh uh-uh. uh. Uh-uh, it ain't gonna happen. That's right. It ain't gonna happen. And she was like, what, 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 what? He's married. And then the girl goes, everyone's married. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yo, <laughs> what is up with these toxic women that what's don't respect on, our vows, yo? That's I mean, great. thank you for the compliment, but what's going on? No, we don't have these conversations enough, man. There's these toxic what's women out here women that out here, don't yo? respect vows, yo. Mm. Like, if that was a mm. guy, that guy would be considered a pig am and I, am, am disgusting. I not wearing, am I not wearing a ring? Word is born. Are we not wearing a ring? Not only am I we wearing a ring, I'm we're flagging. letting you know we're married. We you talk about I mean? being married all the time. This is the new flagging, this yo. This is the new flag, This flagging, yo. This gang right here. We're gang, gang. <laughs> gang, gang. Gang, gang, gang. Fucking gang. gang, yo. Yeah, yeah. And respect our fucking vows. What's wrong with you, they yo? They respect our vows, It's yo. disgusting. For real, back up off the block. We, as men, have to <laughs> stop being afraid to tell women when they doing that type of shit. Meaning like, I don't even know, Charlemagne. No, but I think they like me for but, me. But that's disrespectful when you be like, everybody's married. Yo, what's that mean, yo? I didn't know until she said that. I genuinely thought she was a fan of my comedy. I, I get it, because you're not coming from a place of lust and disgust like those that women is. Why would you she You know what I'm saying? That? Your your motive is pure. My motive is pure. You know pure. what I'm saying? I'm you just walk in the room trying to have a conversation that's it. with Tiff. That's it. These girls out here trying to suck. That suck, suck your, suck a married man's cock. Yo, why are you gonna suck a married man's? <laughs> why would you suck a married man's cock? No damn well this cock ain't been sucked in forever. Now I'm not. <laughs> ju- <laughs> why, why would you? Why would you even do such a thing like that? Now I'm not judging women. Cobwebs all over. You don't want no married man's dick. <laughs> I'm not judging women who you know are only doing what the married man allows them to do. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wait, I'm not I judging do? women who are who are only doing what the married man allows them to do. But if you know that you're dealing with a faithful male, right? Though, don't try to put your lips on that faithful male's cock. Back, come on, and don't yo. gaslight me. That was gaslighting. Now, I think me. she probably did like your stand up. Yeah, she did. And I'm sure she probably yeah, did she like your stand up. Down, down. Man, we should have had Tiff on the podcast this down. week. Down, the Tiff. I didn't even know she was in. We the do city. have to get her on. That'd be great. No, but um. Speaking of marriage, man, uh, uh, what do you think of the T.J. Holmes, Amy Roback situation from Good Morning America? Have you been paying attention? Yo, see, here's the thing. I know it might be shocking to you. I don't watch uh, Good Morning America 3, mm-hmm. uh, but I have heard about what what is happening here. Yeah. And um, I'm not at all surprised. Okay. Okay. Why? Not, I think this is what happens a lot of times with people who spend an inordinate amount of time together. Like, I used to see it with people who worked in restaurants all the time. I'm sure you see it with movies. It's like you're spending so much time with these people mm-hmm. and away from your family, your wife, your girlfriend, et cetera. And uh, shit can get sticky out there, man. I get it. I mean, for me, man, I always feel like as a man, you just get more out of, out of a relationship with a woman when you don't try to sleep with her. And as a man, if you're married, I really think you got to respect those vows because, man, boy, when you don't respect, you got, I think when people don't realize when they're making vows, you're not really making them in front of the pastor. You're not making them in front of your wife. You're not making them in front of the church or wherever you got married. You're making them in front of God. Oof. So when you make those vows in front of God, Oof. you know what I mean? And you don't respect those vows and then God taps your jaw. You, you think that's what happened right there? You think it was oh, God that, that, uh, I mean, you, it's, it's, it's proven, right? Mm. Meaning that you didn't respect your vows. You got your jaw tapped. Now both of y'all Sitting at home, even though I just think that's something that ABC is doing um, because it's the holiday season. So it makes more sense to have two people go sit down and then come back in the new year and see what happens. But the interesting thing about situations like this, the reason this is never going to work for uh, anybody, especially men, is because what does that headline say? TJ Holmes allegedly cheated with several women at ABC. Never fails that the man will be demonized. Whoa, like she was taking advantage of or something. But she could have been doing what that girl was doing to me the other night. She's a married woman, too. It's the same thing in the other situation with the Boston wow. Celtics coach. That's the married woman. They say, oh, you can't wow. even you can't even bring up. The, they, they made Jalen Rose apologize for even asking. How come nobody's having conversations about the married woman? And they say, oh, it's because of the power dynamics and everything else. Well, guess what? These power dynamics are even. TJ Holmes and Amy are both co-hosts. Yet and still, 
TJ is the one getting demonized the most. He's the one in the headlines. How come there's no headline that says Can Amy I? Roback was sleeping with a bunch of people at ABC? Can I be honest with you? I don't even think the power dynamics are even. Talk to me. Women are always in power when it comes to sex. If they're not, it's not consensual. There is yeah. one power consensual player sex. Yes, in, in consensual absolutely, sex. absolutely. Women are always in power, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it can't happen mm-hmm. without her. Mm-hmm. The reason I say consensual sex is the first thing somebody will say when they hear that is, "That's not true." What about people who get sexually assaulted? You oh, know what I mean? Of course, of course. In consensual sex, I agree. So we're assuming this is consensual because they had a relationship. Mm-hmm. So the woman who is the power broker in this relationship agrees to engage into a, in a sexual act. All the man can do is ask when you think about it. As it, long as it's consensual, right. all the man can do is ask. Or, 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 or try by courting, right? You're exactly. courting. You, That's what I meant by yeah, you're, you know d- I mean? you're dating, you're, you're, you're going out, you're kicking it, you're giving off signs. You know, this woman crossed the line. They Technically, bo- a man can't cheat without a woman making him. They both crossed the line. No, no, <laughs> no, no. They both Technically. Cro- he's married too, though. So, no, they, no, so no. they both crossed the line. But he can't do it without her agreeing. He's got self-control. He know he married. No, 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 no. I, you don't understand what I'm saying. She, if it's, if it's consensual, yeah. she made the decision. Sure, but it's if, in her control. Sure, but as a married man, if a am woman. Am I wrong? No, no, right here? I'm like, going to tell you what. No, I'm going to tell you why he's wrong. I can't go in the nightclub no, unless no. the bouncer let me he's in. A, no, wrong is the right word. He's not wrong. Can I go in the nightclub if the bouncer don't let me in? He's he's not wrong. That's a va- very valid point, but there's another point to that. If a woman. You will get angry if I'm in the nightclub. You let me in. If a beautiful woman walks in here right now, show. Yeah. Stands in front of you. Drops all her clothes mm. and reaches for your penis. Mm. If you let her, mm. that's your fault. You you know you're married. You know what you should and shouldn't be doing. So you know that old saying, it takes two. I didn't two. say that there's not fault. Yeah. What I'm saying is a man can't do it without them. A woman can. Nobody's going to say that it's assault. Nobody's going to say it's everything. I get what you're saying. Tries. But, but if a man tries and then the woman pushes away, that guy's assaulting her. If a woman tries, she just failed at hitting on a dude. The woman is the person. She's the bouncer. She's TSA. If a fucking bomb gets on on a plane, we got to talk to the TSA, right? I think it takes two, man. It takes two to cheat, bro. They're pussy TSA. It takes two <laughs> to cheat. They pussy TSA, bro. They pussy well, TSA. Well, speaking of TSA, when you walk through that security camera as a mar- married man, your wedding ring better go off. At, at, when at, you walk through that goddamn uh, metal detector or whatever mm-hmm. the shit, if, you better make sure your wedding ring go off to remind mm-hmm. you, hey, man, you married. Because mm-hmm. I have not seen a person win in these situations yet. Not no man. Not and no man. on vacation with her too. That's the foul shit. Like, mm. maybe your wife forgives you if you just got your dick sucked in a broom closet or something oh, like that. But not man. a vacation into the woods. Your wife has been waiting to go to the woods with you for years. Now, that's the other part too, though, because I don't know if both of them were separated. That's the other part of the story. They're saying that they were both separated oh. from their significant others. But then other people are saying that's not true. So I don't know. But and you're well, right. If they're both separated, then you do whatever the fuck you want to do. But you're right, man. You got to stop treating uh, stop treating the side like the main, bro. Yeah. Wabi, it, it, I'm not your main, Wasabi. I'm talking, I'm talking Go to give the, him a kiss. I'm talking to the Go dog. Go give him a kiss. I'm talking to the dog. What do you think Sabi was in another life? Um, mm, that, mm, mm, mm. This with that, that that woman at the bar last night? <laughs> <laughs> Just looking on you with no consent. You know what I mean? Down! <laughs> that's what you, but that's what you got to do. Facts, I'm only, listen, man, I'm only in control of me, man. I'm not in control of nobody else. You know what I'm saying? Are you in control of buying a new pair of fucking socks? Jesus Christ, I don't, man. I don't have it, bro. What you want me to do, man? I'm going to tell you something. This I thought guy's it, worth millions and millions Why do you keep of saying dollars? this? Why do you say, why, 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 why is this happening? Dollars. Why do you keep saying crazy this? crazy how many millions, millions of dollars. You got to stop saying this. Millions of dollars? Besides, millions of dollars. Tens of millions. Why do y'all keep saying this? It's not true. At least tens yeah. of millions. You know what I want for Christmas? I, and this is true. I thought about this. I literally thought about this this morning. What? I want a bunch of socks, right? Uh-huh. But I want to be able to go in my sock drawer and find socks that batch. Why is that the hardest thing to fucking do Wait, as a hold man, on, hold bro? On. What's happening with the socks when they go in the drawer? They're completely... I don't know. Do you I, have a... It took me 15 minutes to find socks this morning. Do you have a, do you have a maid or something like that? I mean, I, that's, a ter- that's a terrible term. I have uh, help? Ha- housekeepers. I have people who, who help us with the house. And they don't fucking match the socks up before they put them I in the I don't drawer? think nobody matches the socks. This is a historic that's only thing. That's bro. Huh? That's only you. That no, ain't true. Is you, I, is, I don't believe. Let me see your socks right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. College kid. Do your socks match? Yep. Taylor, let me see if your socks match. Your socks this. match? Look at this. You ain't even got no socks on, Kente. Shut up. Yep. I'm the only one with. Well, my, well, technically my socks match, but Bobby. they just dirty. 
down. Here's the thing. You, you are paying a housekeeper to just take your socks out of the laundry and then throw them in the drawer without bunching them together. That's crazy to me. I think I realized. That's absolutely I fucking crazy. Yeah. You can't do that yourself? I think I realized I don't have that many matching pair of socks. You have to. They come matching. And I don't know Unless what happens. buying them individually. I, I don't know what happens to them, bro. I'm not even lying to you. I've never been a sock guy. What's happening right now? I'm starting yo? to get into socks What's now. What's a sock guy? No, no, I'm going to tell you. Salute. What is happening no, I'm right now, you. yo? Salute, salute to Stance, right? Because Stance kind of like made cool socks. Yeah. But that's when I started like paying attention to socks. Okay. Prior to that, I never paid attention to socks like that. You'll go buy briefs. You'll go buy, you know, t uh, tank tops. But you don't really go buy but socks. But you have socks. And then somehow. I'm going to be honest with you. You only have one of them? As I look at my feet, I'm not sure I have socks, bro. And when I think about what was going on in my drawer this morning, I think that those socks are really there for props. I, I'm telling you, it took me 15 minutes to find socks with a drawer full of socks. I'm going to take a picture of my sock drawer later and send it to you, and you're going to understand what I'm saying. No, there was sock, None of the socks matched. You know, these were the only pair of socks that I could call find your, that matched. Call your, uh, your housekeeper right now. For what? So we can have a conversation about it. You this. really think you're going to be able to understand her? <laughs> Honestly, yes, yeah. yeah. You yeah. might. <laughs> you might. My wife speaks the language a little better than I really? do. Really? I don't have the housekeeper's number, though. I just can't believe that somehow your housekeeper is getting away with just tossing your fucking socks in there. I, it's not, or it, you just have one sock. She don't even have to touch the drawer. When I find socks, I usually get socks out of the... I'm like uh, blown away with I, I get socks out of the, 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 the laundry basket most of the time. Uh-huh. So shit. Why isn't she putting them away? Do you do you see? Is there? Wait, what? I, I don't understand. What's no, going I on. totally understand. It's really coming to me now. What What's I coming to you? What I realize there. is I get my socks out of the laundry basket. You know, the cleaners come like two times a week, so I'm probably wearing the same pair of socks every single time. <laughs> you have one pair of socks. <laughs> Maybe two. You have one to two <laughs> pairs of socks. Maybe two. Maybe two. Maybe two. Maybe two. <laughs> I don't, socks socks. Yeah, I don't have socks to wash. Yeah, I don't have socks to wash. Charlamagne, I know what I'm going to get you for Christmas. I want socks. I'm not even yeah. joking, yo. I know. I, but I, I got to really start investing in socks in a real way to where I know like they a pair. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this is a, I got on an 85 style sweatsuit right now. I yeah. know this is the pants to it. Yeah. This is the top. Yeah. So I need the same socks so I can look and say, okay, these go together. Yes. I'm dead serious. What do you mean? Of yeah, how you got tens of millions of dollars? Bro? I you don't have tens of millions of dollars. Stop. stop saying that. How you worth a hundred million dollars and you don't have? Bro, I don't have that. Socks. That's why I keep losing friends now. This guy's the first because they think I got stuff I don't have. Pairs of socks, Listen, this is unbelievable. Taylor said she. she Taylor said that there's socks that come together. Don't all socks Taylor, come it's together? Never been a problem. It's never been a problem for most people Bro. to have socks that match. How are you the richest black man in America? You're you literally the richest black man. You say, who's the richest black man in America? You. That's now not that Kanye true. is not rich no That's more, you're the richest black man in America. The richest black man in America is my good friend, Robert Smith. Wow. Good That's Cap, Good friend. friend. That yeah. guy's white. Robert. <laughs> Did you know Robert Smith is white? I Robert Smith is black. No, Robert Smith is black, black. Robert Smith is buy, uh, is pay off uh, all the student loans at Morehouse graduating class black. Wouldn't you do that if you were really white? You want to trick black people into no, thinking you're black? I would do that if I was really rich. <laughs> That's what you do. So, TJ and Amy, God bless them. What? What is happening right now? <laughs> we wish him Them the best. Edibles ain't leave his system yet. I don't think. <laughs> You good, you wish him the best. You missed the goat this week, man. Ugh, I know. You walked in. You was very disappointed that you missed the goat this week. I saw the goat two times this week, man. Dr. Umar Johnson was on Breakfast Club. And, and hell of a week. And Dr. Umar Johnson was on hell of a week. Okay, tell me about Breakfast Club first. Breakfast Going Club crazy? conversations are always great because, you know, people look forward to Dr. Umar on Breakfast Club. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why do you think he's such an engaging figure despite the fact that a lot of his rhetoric may be uh not as progressive or 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 deemed as polarizing i don't i don't think it has to be progressive i think that black people and people of color think that your messaging has to be progressive but the reality is man most people are conservative 
I really feel that way. Speak on it. I just think most people are conservative. I think that the way we were raised, a lot of us have, you know, old school values. Now, there's things about myself that I've grown to question, especially in regards to religion, just because things don't feel right with my spirit. Mm. You know what I mean? But other than that, for the most part, most people are have conservative values. Mm. It's not really that difficult to express. And I think a lot of things that he expresses are a lot of conservative values. Even his thoughts on interracial relationships. It's not w weird when Asian people say that. It's not weird when Jewish people say that. It's not weird when a Latino or a Dominican says, I want my Dominican daughter to marry a Dominican man. So why is it so like, <gasps> when a black man says a black man should be with a black woman? No, I, I yeah, I've seen a lot of people say these things. First of all, I just want to make it very clear. I absolutely love Dr. Umar Johnson. I'm the biggest fucking fan. He's one of the best communicators, the most hilarious. He really is, internet. yo. So, but I think what a lot of people do is they go, well, just because they're doing that, why can't we do that? But if you do something that we do, that we deem as wrong, it doesn't make it OK if other people do wrong things. Yes. In other words. Right. Like if somebody's like, yo, they beat their wives. Why can't we beat our wives? No, they shouldn't. That's right. And you should continue not. So if you fall in love with someone who is of a different religion or of a different race. God bless. I, God bless you. God and bless. Some people don't feel that way. Uh, Dr. Umar Johnson actually had like a fire argument for it. You know me as a comic. I'm just looking for cool connections. Yeah, 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 yeah. And his on the thing was, he says, what often happens is a lot of uh, affluent, educated black men, like the rich black men, are marrying outside their race. And he thinks that that puts the black community in a tougher situation because I guess they're not making... Black, because women outlive men. Mm. And so when the man passes, that wealth goes to a community a lot of times that has been taking from the black community. We could put that clip in. I mean, and that's the thing I like about Umar. Whether that's right or wrong, it's like, as a comic, I'm looking at that, I'm like, ooh, that's interesting. It's not prejudice. Together. It's, it's, it's based on saying. economics and business. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I guess what I'm saying is just because things are even doesn't mean it's right. Yes. There's a lot of ways to be even yes. that are absolutely wrong. Oh, that person commits crime, I'm going to commit crime. Yeah. No, you shouldn't. Bo you both should not commit crime. But um, he was fucking phenomenal. He's a, he looked incredible. The suit was beautiful. Fucking hair done. Like, he looked made for TV. You know what Dr. Umar showed me when he did Hell of a Week? Dr. Umar showed me that he really is the star we've always known him mm. to be. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Um, he is not performing. As much as we think he may be performing, yeah. I don't think he's performing. Well, the great ones make you think they're not performing. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that he recognizes when he has the opportunity to really get messaging across yeah. that he feels can benefit people yeah. are better people. You know what I mean? Because what he had to say about the Britney Griner situation, whether you agree or disagree with it. What was his take on uh, His take on it, and we can insert that, Taylor, uh, but his take on it was that, you know, it's just a political stunt from the Biden administration, you know, to garner support in 2024 because Britney Griner checks off a lot of boxes. It checks off woman box, Black box, LGBTQ, and celebrity, mm. you know? And I mean, I, I, I think I, I'm pretty sure uh, at this point, we, it's safe to say Britney was a political pawn, not just even for the USA, but for, for Russia, Russia as absolutely. well. Yeah, yeah. Russia used her to get back their merchant of death, you know? And now Biden has another thing he can put on his resume to say that he got done. And it's a cultural thing that people wanted to get done. People are going to remember that. That is, that's one of those things that nobody's going to ever forget mm. in regards to President Biden and the Biden administration. And it, what's what's been interesting is that like uh, there's been this comparison made uh, between Brittany Griner and I believe something Whelan. Paul Whelan. Paul Whelan, the former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan. And and what was Paul Whelan doing in Russia? He got a uh, he was he I don't know I forgot what he was actually doing there, but he got arrested for espionage. But so he, was he spying? No, he said he wasn't. I mean, that's, yeah, of course, that's what you say. I mean, that's what I would say. No, I'm not fine. Just on vacation. You know what I, I, mean? don't, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I guess what I'm trying to say is like, I don't think it's a fair comparison if his job was to go there and spy. You know, because yeah. if your job is I know to he, go was, there, he was working for some security firm or something like that. It, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, if your job is to go somewhere and spy and then you get captured, uh -huh. right? And then you're comparing that to uh, a woman whose job was to go play basketball and she fucked up by bringing drugs in there. But the only reason that she was put in jail in this way is because she's famous and she was a tool. It was a proxy. Go back to that, Taylor. But I, I, I just people are making this comparison. They're like, why are we letting this girl out who, quote unquote, hates America versus this guy who sacrificed for America? Yeah. And it's like, 
Well, the reason why they're in prison might be different things. Yeah, I, oh, God. but it, Taylor, Taylor is amazing. What she what she say? She, what she, she just she just she just informed us that Paul Whelan was accused of spying. Oh wow! No, we were sure. No, we were sure exactly, what he was accused of. We don't we know, know if he, he actually, actually was spying. Like for example, I did a show in Russia. They could easily, and I was actually concerned about this. They could easily at any point in time go, "Oh, this guy's out here. He's out here on behalf of the United States of America. He's trying to put out information or like research different parts of Moscow so they can attack him. Let's lock this motherfucker." Up. Yeah, like that. They could have done that yeah. at any point in time. And trump up some weird charges and then that's right. out of here. Let's insert the Paul Whelan clip uh, here, Taylor. But he Taylor Paul Whelan said I was arrested. For, he called CNN last night. He said I was arrested for a crime that never occurred. Um, I don't understand why I'm still sitting here. Whelan, a former Marine who was a U.S., Irish, British, and Canadian citizen, was detained at a Moscow hotel in December 2018 by Russian authorities, alleged he was involved in an intelligence operation. He was convicted and sentenced in June 2020 to 16 years in prison, and a trial U.S. officials denounced is unfair. I would say that if um, a message could go to President Biden that, um, you know, this is a precarious situation that needs to be resolved quickly, and um, I would hope that he and his administration would do everything they could to get me home, um, regardless of the price they might have to pay at this point. Here's the thing. I can't believe the Biden administration didn't prepare for this backlash. As soon as this broke yesterday, and we talked about it on Breakfast Club, after I, you know, saluted Brittany for coming home and, you know, gave the Biden administration their props, cool. The second thing I said was, but you know y'all about to get crazy backlash because there's a former U.S. Marine named Paul Whelan who they were talking about doing a two-for-one deal for. Yeah, and, two for one. and I said, everybody's going to say WNBA player versus somebody who served the country. Yeah. Right-wing media is going to eat that up. Yeah. They're going to eat that up. Like they propped it up. And, then, and, 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 and for a merchant of death? <laughs> you know Yo, but I mean? wasn't he working for us, too? Because I watched that movie, Lord I heard War. that, too, yeah. So that's the other thing that's weird about this is, like, we locked up a dude who we were also working with. I heard that. I don't know if that's true, but I heard that. Yeah. And he definitely plotted on killing a bunch of Americans. He definitely supplied weapons that killed a bunch of Af Africans and Afghans. So, I mean. Yo, that's the other thing I was thinking, right? Like, you know how there's so many, like, um, unstable nations in Africa, right? Especially the ones that have all these uh, incredibly valuable natural resources. Yeah. Doesn't it? behoove the countries that are extracting those natural resources to keep those nations as unstable as possible so that they can't organize and find a way to nationalize those resources yeah. and then make it far more expensive to remove them. Yeah, if you keep everybody if you keep everybody else in chaos but you're or, you're organized to do what it is you want to do meaning take that take those resources from that country you'll never lose. Like it's no surprise like I they're doing it to us here now. A hundred percent. But I'm also like, if you look at the, the Congo, right, who, which is, I think, the most uh, resource rich region in the world. Right. It's also one of the most uh, unstable places. And I'm like, this can't be a coincidence. Mm -hmm. There has to be purpose here. Right. Like, I don't know. I feel like it. it you keep everybody confused. You keep everybody in chaos. They'll never pay attention to what you're really doing. Because I guess if you look like you look at the Middle East, right? We were extracting oil in the Middle East far before there were these organized, incredibly wealthy nations. But what did, we have, what did we have to do before we started extracting oil? War. Exactly. No, no, no. But I'm saying, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is maybe they learned from what happened in the Middle East and they were like, oh shit, we gave, we gave, we allowed these people to profit enormously off of the oil money that was extracted. We being, you know, Great Britain, the United States, many other countries develop all the infrastructure. They weren't developing the sophisticated infrastructure. Then once they made billions and trillions of dollars, they were like, okay, we don't need you guys extracting anymore. Now you're going to have to pay for the oil. And now I imagine the Western countries going, ooh, we fucked up there. We let shit be too sweet. Mm -hmm. It was way better when they were in chaos and we were just yanking that shit out and paying whatever fucking propped up leader they have. That's right. It's kind of fucked. Like, Bro, keep people in chaos, man. I'm telling you, why do you think every day on social media is some shit? Mm. And that's what I said yesterday. I'm like, oh God, today's going to be one of them shit shows online. Because mm. I knew it was going to happen. I knew that the right wing media was going to be highly upset that, you know, Paul Whelan wasn't home. I knew they were going to be highly upset that they traded a merchant of death for Brittany Griner. I knew that, uh, you know, once that faction of black Twitter and, you know, what they call the hoteps found out that, you know, oh, this dude, Victor, 
was responsible for the death of a bunch of Africans. I knew that was going to turn into something. I knew that people was going to say, oh, this is an agenda because Britney's LGBT. Like all it was, it was so predictable and all the usual suspects did what they always do. And what did we do all day yesterday? Fuss and fight. Not and who right. knows what the fuck was really going on in the world yesterday. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> like, but like, this is a good lesson. Like, you get locked up abroad. If I get locked up ab abroad, I'm gay. Why? That's Dude. the last thing you want to do is be in some of these countries. No, but I need I need extra boxes to, to bring me back. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get what you're you saying. Know what I, mean? I get what you're saying. I'm gay. I get what you're saying. I'm Chinese. I will say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all the thing. Whatever it is that you need to curry favor with, that's me. I will say, though, man, the Britney situation did show me what, uh, you know, communities are capable of, you know, when they decide to organize and strategize and bring awareness and attention to something. Oh, you think that's what made it happen? A hundred percent. Like, yo, Brit I don't even know what endorsement deals Britney got. And you know why I don't know? Because they don't do a good a job of marketing her as people have done over the past seven to eight months. Mm. You know what I mean? The whole We Are BG campaign, yep. constantly talking about her. Yo, not even on the on the low. Paul Whelan benefits from Britney Griner yeah. being arrested. Yeah. I never heard I of Paul Whelan. Yeah. I never heard of Paul Whelan until yeah. the Britney Griner situation. And now conservatives got to carry through on all the shit they're talking about it. Right? Because if you're going to prop him up and say, look how unfair it is, when you get in power, you better get his ass back. Yeah, 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 and yeah. He talked yeah. all that shit about how important he is and the sacrifices he made. He talked all that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. You better make sure that that's not just fluff to criticize the Biden administration. You better make sure you actually care about that, man. Yo, the, the ill thing is Russia probably sitting back like, hold up. So a WNBA player gets caught with a weed pen, Brittany Griner, mm -hmm. and they gave us the merchant of death for her? Yep. Oh, we're definitely not giving up Paul. For oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're not giving up Paul for nothing less oh, than yeah. like five first round picks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Five, uh, seriously. Like that's that's literally what that's literally what it is. I know that's why they're keeping Paul Wheeling now. They're like, oh, this is what we got for this? Mm. Oh, I know. Oh my God. You no, know? Biden got bodied in that trade for oh, sure. Easily. Absolutely. But I mean, listen, it might help him to, to Dr. Umar's point, it might help him in 2024. I don't know. You know, I here's the thing. You're black. How does it feel? Do you feel like he looked out for you? I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Whenever I see any black person, you know, get free. From an unjust charge, mm -hmm. I'm happy. Well, it was it was a just charge. Nine she years, bro. Weed. I don't know what the rules are there, but there are countries with. That's her, true. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, the rules are different. Rule. You're right. I'm comparing it to America. You're right. You're right. You know, but it just seems unfair. But here's the thing with Biden, though, and this is what I've been saying for the past couple of days, and I'll continue to say: keep that same energy for America. Joe Biden has been responsible for some of the harshest crime, drug legislation in the history. Of this country. Free them up. You know what I mean? Let them out. If you can look in Russia and say that's unjust for Brittany Griner to be over there and with a vape got all pen. And these people locked the fuck up here. It's right. You that got people bullshit. locked up it's here. Affirmative nonsense. He, he, right now, he should pardon everybody that's in prison on a federal level for a nonviolent weed offense. Agreed. Pardon them. You can do that. You don't Done. need no votes or nothing. He can do that. Done. You know what I'm saying? You should expunge the records. I think you did that. Uh, no, he didn't. No, That's not what he did, Alex. What he did was he pardoned everybody who has a, a simple possession charge. But there's nobody in prison on a federal level for simple possession. Oh, I thought it was nonviolent weed offense. Nah, it's, it's simple possession of marijuana. There's nobody in prison on a federal level for a simple possession of marijuana charge. Mm -hmm. So that's great. And it looks good. But there's nothing there, bro. You know what I mean? The only reason I never really criticized it too hard because it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. But now that we see... What you can do, run it up. Hey, run it up. You can you can do that right here in America. You know run what I'm saying? And up. and by the way, there is nobody alive right now who should do that more than Joe Biden. Mm. Cuz how do you right your wrongs of the past? You right your wrongs of the past by righting the wrongs of right now. Mm. You're a president of the United States of America. You have the power to pardon everybody in prison. First of all, you can pardon anybody you want. That's number 1 on a federal level, but you can pardon those people that are in prison right now for non-violent weed offenses on a federal level. Mm. Do it. Yeah. Keep that same energy. Yeah. And there's political prisoners here in America, you know, that, that you can let free. So I'm just saying, keep that same energy. You know what I mean? You know, don't, and, and, and that's what I want us to do. Keep the pressure where the pressure needs to be. Cause I think sometimes we, um, 
we get we get jaded with democracy, but are we really participating in democracy? Mm. Democracy isn't just voting and they get in and then you just wait for them to do something. You got to push until something happens. That's why I love what my girl Tesla Figueroa always says, push the fucking line, yo. So that's all I, that's all I care about. Let's see if he does it. I don't think he will. And, and also with Britney, I'm just like, I, for me, it's just like, yo, why wouldn't I be happy that Britney Grind is uh, out of prison? Like, I don't like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Just like when Paul Whelan comes home, be happy too. I've been in jail. I can only imagine how that shit feels yeah. to be locked up in Russia and, you, you know, you probably are being held captive just because you're being used as a political pawn, mm. you know? Yeah. Which is why people said initially when Britney got arrested, they didn't want nobody to say nothing. That's what they didn't want nobody to say. Because they were busy negotiating. Yeah, that's right. They didn't want nobody to make because because it messes the up the negotiation. Commotion, yeah, the more valuable she looks, uh, the more that's right. value you have to offer to get her back. That's right. Uh, so we fucked up. Maybe he's fucked up. Maybe because it, it, but it, if I, nobody cared, they wouldn't even get. That's her back. what I'm saying. I, yeah. you know, I, under, I understand both sides. It looks weak politically that like one of our sports stars is locked up in another country. We can't do anything about it. It looks weak as a country, and you have to think about like outside of whether or not we should protect our citizens abroad. Because I was yeah. thinking about that yesterday. I'm like, if our if we break the law abroad, do we bully other countries to make exceptions? I don't know. Like, if another if someone from another country came here and broke the law, lock that motherfucker up. How dare you disrespect him? Yeah, yeah. So I'm like... And now the diplomats from those countries got to deal with each other. Hmm. I like what you just said, though. You said it looks weak to have one of our sports stars look, locked up. You know what else is weak? Uh, when you don't treat her like a sports star when she's here. Nobody was talking about the WNBA and Brittany Griner beforehand. So that's the other thing. Yeah. What happens moving forward? Moving yeah. forward, all of those games should be packed, right? No, they won't be packed. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not, they just, it, it's just not interesting. We know this, though. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? That's the fucked up thing about it. But people do like female sports, like female tennis. You go watch the tennis. I love female it's... basketball. Okay. I watch college basketball all the time. Why? Because of Don Staley and the University of South Carolina Lady Gamecocks. I love watching them play. I started watching in 2017 when Asia Wilson was playing for the right. Lady Gamecocks. You know, she's from the crib. She's from South Carolina. Don, they got a great program there. I love watching college basketball. But I'm also a person who loves the fundamentals of basketball. Right. There's no better fundamentally sound people in in, in uh than college women basketball players. You don't believe that. That's a fact. You don't believe that. They're fundamentally sound. You don't believe that. You don't... They, you don't believe that. They're fundamentally sound, Schultz. You don't believe They that. do everything but dunk. Everything else, the, the basics of basketball, they are the best... You know why they're the best at fundamentals? That's all they can do. <laughs> like, but <laughs> the NBA players, college basketball players that are male also know those fundamentals. Nah. They know them better than the women I and they're athletic enough to do all these amazing things that are incredibly entertaining. But that's what I mean. They can do other things, right? They can shoot from half court like the Steph Curry's and yeah. they can dunk and, you know, do crazy things with handle and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them focus more on that than the fundamentals. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and one players aren't fundamental. Yeah, but we're not comparing them to M1. We're comparing them to the top level, you know. I think when it comes to, I think when it comes to fundamentals, there's nobody better than college women basketball players because that's literally all they can focus on. I mean, you could think that. That's fine. <laughs> it's wrong. It's just, it is completely wrong, but you could think it. I listen, I I would love more people to go support college basketball. The reality is women aren't into it. And if women aren't into it, it's up to men to go support the female sport. Salute and to Bill that's unfair. Like women, you if you are if this is a feminist movement and equality and all that kind of shit, you're sixty percent of the population. Go support the women when they do things. The reality is you would rather watch the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills than go out and support a show. That's why the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills got fucking four million viewers or whatever it does. And a WNBA game has absolutely nobody there. That's what Bill, this is listen, on women. I don't want to hear right. no more complaining. It, so, U.S. soccer. If the women are upset, maybe I understand that a little bit more just because. So many people do go out to those games because they win. Like when the U.S. soccer is winning, you know, Olympic gold or like World Cups and that kind of shit. Uh -huh. But if your stadiums are empty, that ain't men's fault. Yo. Say, hey, you know, Bill Burr said that same thing, man. But I feel that same way about the movie Bros. We talked about Bros last yeah, week. Yeah, that's on you. If, if you it's like, where, where's where's your community? If Pull I if, if I put something out and I put something together and it's 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 you know driven by the culture, like it's a black cast and you know that. If if it don't do good, I'm not pointing at you, your white people, and saying why y'all ain't show up. How Wakanda do? Amazing. All right, you know, but I mean that's different though. No, no, I get what you're saying, but that's different though. I don't think it's different. 
Black Panther was not this like huge Marvel character for us growing up. This is supported by the community, a movie, a movie that's reflected. The community, uh, it resonates within the community. Now, that's not to say that white people aren't excited about too and comic book fans aren't excited about too and you want to have multiple umbrellas that you could like pull from. But the reality is, Black people were fucking with Wakanda, and that's yeah. why it's successful. I think I think Black Panther. You're, I'm not. I, I don't disagree. You're right. Um, I think Marvel has a built-in thing already. But when you take the casual Black person who wants to go see Black Panther, but may not go see no other Marvel movie, that's why movies like Wakanda Forever and Black Panther Basketball got a built-in thing. It's one of the most yeah. popular sports in the world. No, you're right. Now you're right. what you're doing is drafting right. off of basketball, and it's not working as well. You got to find a way to make it work. Change some shit up. I don't know what the fuck you got to do, but you got to change some shit to make it exciting. Like, yeah. And I'm not saying that they should objectify women to do it, but there are certain sports that have objectified women, and it's been very valuable. You look at volleyball. They got these girls dancing around in fucking thongs and bikinis and shit like that. I personally think it's you shouldn't need to do that to them, but the numbers are undeniable. Simple <sighs> as that. I think the WNBA just simply needs eyeballs, man. I know that's what we're saying, but... Yeah. Dumbass. How do you get the eyeballs? Yeah. What, I was, <laughs> just, what, I, what I'm trying to say is... Make the game more interesting. I don't I mean, know because the, ga the game is interesting. I promise you, I With love... tennis, female tennis is interesting, and it's not because they're moaning and grunting when they're hitting. It's literally because the volleys last longer. So their <laughs> lack of athleticism and power makes the game better in a way because you see more back-and-forth action, whereas the men, the serves are so strong, a lot of times it's one or two touches, and then that's the yeah. point. So the game itself is really interesting and entertaining. Uh, women have to find a way to do that with basketball. They have to find a way where their game is really great. It, college it, basketball is like women's college basketball is like that. Bro. Yo, nobody goes, you know what I want to watch today? Some fundamentals. Nobody's ever said I that. do. I want to watch Allen Iverson cross someone over and make them drop. I want to watch somebody dunk from the free but throw line. But they I want to watch Steph now there's, Curry. There's a lot of girls that do that too, though. They handle be nice and they can shoot. I like women's great, college let's basketball. Show that. Let's now, show I'm that. not going to lie. I don't watch WNBA. Not because I don't want to. I watch it. I watch it when Asia's playing. When Asia's playing, the Las Vegas Aces are playing, and the game's on. I'll watch it. But WNBA college, ba I mean college basketball, women's college basketball, I definitely, uh, definitely watch. Yeah, I mean, look, but it's the, because of the lady game. College. The UFC has found a way to get uh people to watch women's uh that's different MMA. That's I, different. And, oh well, it's different. We love blood. Blood sports, violent, yeah, violence will always win, bro. I mean, usually when women are bleeding, we try to stay a little bit, <laughs> you know, away from that. <laughs> 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 you married, bro. We Wait, married, bro. Oh yeah, we out here. Don't stop number to send us, bro. Yeah, she's talking uh, about. Yeah, yeah. It, you know what uh, I mean? It stops a, a good dinner combo. <laughs> Did you know that? So stupid, man. Uh, no, but I guess what I'm saying is like with boxing. No one really cared about female boxing. Maybe Layla Ali a little bit, but like it wasn't as big with female MMA. There are female MMA stars that are literally almost as big as the top male MMA stars. So they found a way to make the sport interesting, entertaining, and really enjoyable when these girls are fighting. But that's because that's there's, awesome. no, there's nothing those women MMA fighters can do that... The, the, there's nothing they can do that the men can't do, or vice versa. Like, it's the same thing. What, what can a man do in the ring that a woman can't? They kick each other, they hit each other, they beat each other, I mean, they slam say, each other. You could say the same thing about uh, WNBA. No, no dunking. That's what Shaq said. Shaq said they don't drink champ. Shaq was like, if they would just lower the rim a little bit and women could dunk more, people would, people would, you know, be into it. I don't know I, if it's the dunking. You know what my idea was? You know, I don't know if it's fair, but my idea was add one trans woman per team. Ooh. That was my idea a long time ago. And yeah. what happens? I, I, you, now you get to dunking. That's all it's about. Like, uh, now you get alleys getting thrown and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Now, don't get me wrong. There's people that dunk. There's a woman, uh, I cannot remember the, 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 her name. She's for the, she plays for the South Carolina Gamecocks. She dunked in a game this year. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's just like, that's what's missing. Shaq said that. Shaq was like, if you just lower the rim just a little bit mm. in the WNBA, it changes the whole complexion of the game. Mm. And I, 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 I believe that. So it's like, you know, my, my idea is add one trans woman per yeah. team. Or lower the rim. Or lower the rim. I think they got to do something because it's not working out. What? <laughs> so it's like, I love watching fundamentals. But the way to fix this game it's is dunking. adding ducks. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, man, you want me to think of some ideas? About it? What are you trying to do, man? You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying y'all wrong. I'm just saying I, I know I'm one individual. Okay, we're trying to bring more than just people like me. It's not clearly not a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we only like the Gamecocks because they're from South Carolina. And Don Staley's a bad motherfucker, man. Yeah. God damn. Don, Don Staley is a bad motherfucker. Yo, have you ever watched 
I know you're going to say no. You know I'm asking you. Did you ever watch the uh, the women's Olympic team, Doc, 30 for 30? When it was Lisa Leslie and Don Staley and Cheryl Swoops and uh, no. Rebecca Lobo. Oh, man. I mean, I, I'm a documentary guy. It's, it came out this year. Love the documentary. But just what Don, what Don has done for the, the sport of women's, you know, basketball and who she is as a person and what she represents, man, is, is incredible. Like some people are just special. Some people have gifts mm-hmm. like, 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 you know, Deion Sanders. We about to talk about Deion Sanders. Like Deion Sanders has a gift, mm-hmm. you know, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis has a gift. Mm-hmm. So like there's something about them that the way they speak is able to motivate athletes to be the best version of the, the best version of yeah. Phil Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Like Don Staley to me is is she got it like she's that. got it like that. You know what I mean? And, and it pro- it shows because she wins at every level. You know. Yeah. So yeah, salute to her. What do you think of the Deion Sanders situation, man? I I mean, have you given it I, any thought? I have because I like I also heard about Umar and what he had to say, and I've heard people make that criticism, but like. I don't know. I thought him going to Jackson State and, you know, dedicating three years there, taking his son there, his son is a top recruit. He could have gone to any school in the nation. Yeah. And he's potentially sacrificing that exposure at a top university. Could he have gone to any school in the nation? Oh, I thought he was like a number one ranked quarterback. In the, oh, his in the son. Oh, yeah. I thought you meant Dion as a coach. No, no, his son. Okay. And yeah, I mean, one of his sons. Jackson State. Yeah, one of his. Sacrifice, potentially sacrificing major exposure. Thank God. His other son was well. playing at South Carolina. Is that right? Yeah, his other son was playing for the Gamecocks. He transferred guess, to Jackson I State. I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is like, one, he's allowed to go make money. Two, he's clearly made an impact for that university. Mm-hmm. Three, maybe other people will do what Dion did and he started a trend, but he's also allowed to go make money. And he's also allowed to take his son to a Division One prime time university so he can compete against the best talent so he has a chance to prepare himself for the nfl like what do, what are you expecting him to do like have his son not go up against top competition then go into the nfl and then be like shocked and then flame out mm-hmm. i think it's bare minimum his son should definitely go there i don't even know if it's just about his son i think Dion is the person who's always poured into people and that's what i've been telling people you know all week Dion sanders coached high school football mm-hmm. you know for several years Dion sanders opened up Prime Prep Academy, which closed because of financial issues. Deion Sanders has always said he wanted to coach at Florida State University. Mm. Deion Sanders has never, ever, you know, hidden his desire to say he ultimately wants to be a coach at Florida State. But he knows, like everybody else, he's got to, you know, the ladder. Go, take those steps. Jackson State University was a school that offered him an opportunity to take a step. Prior to that, he got offered an assistant coaching gig somewhere. He didn't want to be an assistant coach. Jackson State, like, okay, Dion can give our, you know, school a boost. They hired Dion. Dion said from the beginning, hey, man, I'm here to, you know, change the perspective of, of HBCUs. This is what God told me to do. And it bugs me out that people are saying, why, why did he say God told him to do that? God don't tell y'all to do something. Y'all go do it. Be successful at it or be a failure at it. And then God tells you to move on to something else. Mm. <laughs> like He went to Jackson State, $1.2 million for four years. Three years, decided to move on, told them uh, a year or two ago, take half of that salary, use it for student facilities. How can people say Dion was in it for the money when his track record clearly shows he's never been in it for the money? Was he in it for the money when he was coaching high school football? Mm. Was he in it for the money when he launched Prime Prep Academy and it closed his financial issues? Let's say he was in it for the money. What's wrong? Where's the money, though? My point is, whenever somebody's doing those no, things, no, it's like going to Colorado's for the money, not doing Jackson State. I don't, I don't think anybody I, I don't even, Jackson State. Was I don't even know if Colorado's for the money as much as it's for. I want the opportunity to coach on a Power Five level because my ultimate goal is Florida State, and I told y'all that from the beginning. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think this is a really unfair criticism of somebody that's clearly dedicated time and personal resources Absolutely. to uplifting an HBCU and the students that were on that team. And we're and, and uh, yeah. we're and we're and and people are doing what they usually do, which is focus on the individual and not the issue. Because the yeah. issue is HBCUs are chronically underfunded. Mm. Why are they chronically underfunded? Because of uh, you know, uh, underfunding from the states that mm. they're in, from you know, low donations from alumni and low endowments. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's just like a lot of this stuff. I'm like, when the last time you donated to an HBCU? 
<laughs> you know, if the if Deion Sa- if Deion Sanders is at this school, if you haven't donated, we don't want to hear. Anything I don't want to hear shit you got yeah. to say. It's not like he even went to Jackson State. Word of mine. Mean? Like, it's not like he's that's his alma mater or anything. He feels like he owes him anything. The only reason he did is to give back to that community, which is going to be way more than the average person criticizes him. Yes, Man, that shit is bullshit. And Deion Sanders, uh, I mean, uh, HBCUs were criminally underfunded before Deion Sanders, and, and they're going to be criminally underfunded after. How do you fix that? You fix that by digging down in your pockets. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And 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 donating to the school of your choice. And I'm only speaking from somebody who does it. You know, Breakfast Club, we raised over $800,000, you know, for the Thurgood Marshall College Fund, mm. you know, which goes to students at HBCUs. I came out of my pocket, quarter million dollars. My mother's on my mother, South Carolina State, with a lot with a lot more to come. Mm. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, you heard me on here talking about our Thriller Possibility Summit that we did in Nashville back in November. What date? I don't remember what date that was, Taylor. We did it with Black Effect, my podcast network, iHeart and Nissan. We flew 50 HBCU students out. Mm. We paid for that, mm. you know? Flew 50 HBCU students out. Had a panel, panels all weekend, you know, for them to uh, learn from other people who went to HBCUs and who have gone on to be successful. So once again, what are you investing in HBCUs? To sit around and say, oh, Deion Sanders, you know, should have stayed a little longer because he was going to help all HBCU rise. Deion is not your savior, brother. Yeah. Sister. <laughs> like, Deion Sanders is not your savior. And guess what? Deion came and showed us the possibilities. Mm. He showed us what HBCUs could be. There you go. If folks you actually... the right talent, people went there. That's right. That's and, and guess what? Anybody who makes the move that Dion did, which there is Eddie George out there, by the way. Eddie George is at Tennessee State. Y'all don't know that because y'all fake caring about Dion. But mm-hmm. Eddie George is at Tennessee State. But any, you know, there's only one Dion. But anybody, let's just say, with that kind of experience, as far as, you know, being an NFL player or whatever and deciding to come play college football, if they're really good, they're probably not going to be at the HBCU, HBCU long. Because the HBCUs can't afford to pay them. They can't compete. Well, that's another good point where it's just like, yo, let's put our money where our mouth is. If it is about the money, then where are those, uh, what are they called, graduates? Where are the alumni that are making tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars? Where are those, I think they're called boosters or something like that, that are going to be donating to the school to keep a guy like Dion? Why does Dion have to not only sacrifice what he wants to do, meaning eventually coach at Florida State, what his son wants to do, which is prepare the best visibility to play in the NFL, and what they both might want to do, which is generate generational wealth. Like, why do they have to do all those sacrifices while everybody else is looking around criticizing? To me, it seems unfair. I think Dion's made a lot of sacrifices, man. Dion lost two toes, bro. Oh, are they gone? Amputated. Which ones? I don't know which ones, but he lost two toes over the past couple of years. People forget Dion was in the hospital earlier this year. Yeah, for what? I don't remember. what. It, I think he had a blood clot or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it's just like, yo, he's 55 years old. He's probably looking like, I don't, you know... I, I, let me let me do what I need to do now. Like I don't understand why we're acting like somebody can't have multiple callings throughout their life. Yeah. Every and everybody won in this situation. Yeah. Nobody got fucked over. Yeah. Jackson State University won. They got what they wanted over the last few years. Deion Sanders won. He got what he wanted. Now everybody's moving on. But here's the thing: HBCUs are still here. Mm. So what are we gonna do? Keep pointing at Deion. Be like, okay, Deion's gone. Deion, this is your fault. HBCUs are like this. Knock it off. Yeah. HBCUs were like this before he got there. Yeah. HBCUs were like that while he was there. So what are we going to do yeah. to help, you know, the HBCUs of our choice? That's all. That's all. Um, you want to pay some bills? Yeah, let's do it. Let's pay some bills, man. What you got? All right, guys, let's take a break for a second because, uh, listen, some of you guys might be missing out on your favorite shows because it's not available in your region, in your country, wherever the hell you're traveling to. Listen, trying to keep your private time private, you absolutely can, and you can do it with NordVPN, okay? If you're bored with U.S. Netflix, why not take it for a spin in the U.K. using NordVPN and a click of a button, you can do that. Basically, what it does is it tricks the internet into thinking that you're in a different country, and then you get to access all the internet stuff from that country. For example, out there in the U.K., they got different shows on Netflix than they do here. Same with Italy. Same with any other country in the world and you can access any of those wherever you are without traveling. How amazing is that? What if you are traveling, you're trying to finish a show that doesn't exist in Switzerland's Netflix or Switzerland's 
Amazon or wherever it is. You just use that VPN. Make sure that VPN is where that show does exist. It doesn't matter where you actually are. You get to watch everything, okay? I'm telling you right here, there's no need to travel to Japan to watch your favorite anime when NordVPN brings it right to you. They have 5,000 plus server options. No show is out of your reach. They've also doubled down on keeping you safe with their new threat protection feature. Say goodbye to intrusive website ads and malware. Even if you download an effective file, threat protection kicks in and deletes it before it makes a mess out of your computer. It's the price of a cup of coffee every month, a small price to pay for premium cybersecurity and access to a vast amount of entertaining content from all over the world. So, Grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to Nord, that's N-O-R-D, VPN.com slash Brilliant Idiots to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus four months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's N-O-R-D, VPN.com slash Brilliant Idiots for a discount off your NordVPN plus four months free. Also, also, this episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost? Most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions when the actual total is closer to $200. That's right. That's right. You could be wasting hundreds of dollars each month on subscriptions you don't even know about. There's this app that personally I love using that takes care of all of that for me. It's called Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. The app shows all your subscriptions in one place and then cancels for you whatever you don't still want. How amazingly convenient is that? I sign up for things all the fucking time that are monthly because I want to access one thing in that moment and I just forget about it and they just keep on charging me. Rocket Money can even find subscriptions you didn't know that you were paying for. You might even find out you've been double charged for a subscription. Now to cancel a subscription all you have to do is press cancel and then Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Get rid of useless subscriptions with Rocket Money now. Go to rocketmoney.com slash idiots. Seriously, if you could save hundreds per year, you would, right? Well, that's rocketmoney.com slash idiots. Cancel your unnecessary subscriptions right now at rocketmoney.com slash idiots. Now let's get back to the show. Uh, we got any church announcements, Schultz? No church announcements. Oh, uh, only church announcement I got, man, is uh, make sure you tune in a hell of a week on Comedy Central. Make sure you scream us this week. If you missed uh, Thursday night's episode with Dr. Umar Johnson, Sam Morell, and uh, Kaz Kazim. I do not know how to pronounce Kaz's last name. You know what I mean? If, 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 Famu Ide. Famu Ide. And Yvonne Orji. You can scream us on Paramount Plus all weekend on Apple TV uh, all weekend. Next week is our final episode of the year. Ooh. Um, yeah, and then we'll, we'll be back uh, hopefully in January. Hopefully in January. You know, um, Comedy Central, you saw Trevor Noah. Last night was his last show. How'd that feel? Were you around for that? Did you watch it? I mean, I watched it. Honestly, if I tell you how I felt, I, I was really kind of upset a little bit. Why? Because they didn't tell us that... Um, Trevor was going to be on for an hour and some change. <laughs> oh. You know? So you guys were... I'm promoting regular. Like, you know, hey, check us out 11.30, you know, 11.30, 11.30, Comedy Central. I'm feeling good. I got Yvonne Orgy and I got Umar and yeah. I got Kaz and I got Sam and I know we had a great show and I was excited because I'm like, oh, this is Trevor's last show so I know it's going to be a lot of eyeballs on it but I didn't know that it was going to be an hour and some change and then it was like, oh, it's going to, you know, be over at 11.45. I'm like, okay, cool. You know? Until 11.45 came. Mm. And Trevor was still on. <laughs> and he didn't go off till 12.05. Wow. So I felt a little way, but then I had to, you know, take a step back and be like, well, it is Trevor's last show, but still, it's not a live show, so. So they knew. It's, yeah, at least tell us. Yeah. So I, I just want to have, I just want the information so I could tell my people when to tune in. Exactly. That's all. Because, yeah. you know, you got everybody that was on the show posting, saying, hey, 11.30, 11.30, 11.30, but then it didn't come on until 12 something. So, you know. Wow. God bless. You know, Trevor's getting a lot of props because he praised the black woman for his success uh, while signing off the Daily Show for the last time. Well, that's the right thing to say. Yeah, praised his mom and his grandma and, you know, just different black women that he's Yo, he's, can black men from. get any credit, yo? He's a black man. We get no credit. Like, <laughs> I feel like we do so much. He's a black, black man, folks. What? He's a black man. As a black man, I have to. 
What? I am Jew. <laughs> I am Semite. <laughs> I am black man. Okay? I'm for real. Listen, you got to respect me. Hey, man, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Salute to Jalen Smith. Jalen Smith is an 18-year-old who is now the youngest black man in the United States. Man, this is so funny, but it also shows how politics work, man. Uh, Jalen Smith literally had 218 votes. <laughs> Yo, youngest black mayor in the United States of America. He might be, you gotta be the youngest mayor. There's nobody younger than I've never, yeah, right? I've never, I think you gotta be 18 to run. You gotta be 18 to run, bro. Yeah. But no, I'm proud of us. We got a, We got another mayor. We got, <laughs> and it's, it, no, this is fire, dude. This is amazing. It's an amazing thing. Also, politics is not that fucking hard. Getting 250 votes. 218 votes. Yo. Whatever, bro. It's like, and only 2,000 people in the town. I'm like, I want to know what the funding is like for that town. Like, what's the budget, the access to the budget saw? But yeah. salute to you, young king. Okay, I see you with the phone on the belt buckle. Oh, shit, I thought that was a beeper. Nah, bro, that's the iPhone sideways. Whoa. That's, Yo, that guy that's how they it, do bro. it in Earl, Arkansas, baby. Yo, Jalen got it. That's how they do it in Earl, Arkansas. Taylor, let's do some... um Black Kings, finally, <laughs> a little respect bestowed. Let's do some... um. What? What? You know, there's you a, lot to... of, a lot of a lot of us. We black did all of that. Support black women a lot. I want to see more black women supporting black men. We do. Uh, see, that doesn't seem very supportive. Uh, Cardi B. No, this that doesn't is, this, seem very supportive this, at all. This real. Cardi B gets anxiety making music, right? Yeah, she should. Everybody gets anxiety doing what they do. Of course, because you're worried about the way that people are going to perceive it. That's, that's why right. the music is good. This that's is right. yeah, Cardi. That's, that's right. Good for you. Wasabi. You care a lot. That Why means do you, you like care. me, Wasabi? What do you mean? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Cardi, um... Car What's wrong with liking oh, you? God, come Wasabi. On. Here you go with this again, Get man. There. Get up in there. Wasabi, yeah. come on, man. Yeah. Those right. are good girls. We here, we here, we here. We here, we here, we here, we here, we here, we here Wasabi. Those are good girls. We here, we here, we here, That's we here. No, we here, we here, we here, Wasabi. That's a good cast. All right, Wasabi. She knows a strong black man. <laughs> she knows a strong black man. Good job, she Wasabi. Good job. Oh, somebody man. left that comment. Somebody said, man, one day, somebody said, man, Charlamagne, the way he got anxiety, man, one day a dog. No, you know what's so funny about this? I gave Donkey the day to that guy in Florida who was walking the dog and then decided to fuck the little golden doodle in front of everybody. Like, he was walking the dog and just decided to fuck the golden doodle in front of everybody, right? What? So somebody left a comment under my page, on, under that post and goes, one day Charlemagne's gonna get a dog, man. He's gonna understand why we love dogs so much. I'm like, it's the wrong post to leave this kind of comment, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 I get what you're saying. Are you you talking about something totally different That's in regard to anxiety and like, you know, That's hilarious. that was stupid, bro. I'm like, you're not paying attention. That's bro. hilarious. You're not paying attention. But yeah, that, yeah, salute to Cardi, man. Cardi, just make the music. Cardi, you won already. Yeah. Cardi has over exceeded all expectations. That's facts. I knew Cardi was going to be a superstar. Yeah. I said it a million times. I told people, yeah. hey. oh, Jesus Christ, this, what's up with the ass, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Yeah, you never did that. What's up? Come now, on. See, she knows see? what a strong black man Dogs was. are crazy. Dogs act like fucking women when they see married men, bro. Right, though? You know right what I'm saying? Though? Like, Come yeah, on, I, I came over here. I'm Put cool. That thing up. That's what I'm saying. What's that song? Toot that, that thing. That's what I'm saying. He came over here. He was cool. She. He told me he liked me. She told she. me she liked me on the radio. She was throwing that pussy. I know. Up. Then we have a little conversation. I give her a little rhythm and she throw the pussy up in you my face. I mean? That's crazy. God damn. Now she all sad because you said no. <laughs> it's okay. She, that, that's what happens after they say, yeah, they everybody's sad. married. I'm married. Oh, everybody's married. Wait, what's that? Oh, you think Charlotte's gay? That's wrong. You can't say we're gay just because we don't sleep with you. That's, that's not right. That's offensive to us. Why do women always do that? You know what I mean? Why do women always do that? Actually, right. actually. Okay, see. Yeah. All right, let me stop flirting with you. Yep. Go to some, um, do some Asking Idiots, Taylor. Yo. How long have you been recording, Alex? Um, about an hour. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. Took that thing up. All y'all getting this week is a hot 60, baby. There we go. <laughs> All right. We got shit to do. I love y'all, though. I really do, man. Don't worry. We, when the new year, when we get the new Brilliant Idiot Studio, Ooh, you know what I'm yeah. saying? We got y'all. Okay? What? Taylor. Taylor keeps showing us stuff. Oh, this is interesting. Now, oh, this, this is, is interesting. Yeah, yeah, this one's really good. An old video of T.I. You can play this. An no, old this video. Of, an, we were talking about this one. An old video of T.I. on his podcast from 2020. is making. I don't even know if that was from 2020, though. It's making the rounds on the internet with T.I. admits to giving information to the authorities in regards to his dead cousin. So basically, he's saying that he, you know, 
snitch on the deck. Yeah. Police, pull us over. Pull us over. I have a gun. Why are we going through the court pressing? <laughs> and so we caught no gun case to mm-hmm. that. And, you know, my lawyer said, well, you know, I can make everything go away if it if it was Tremel's. After he had passed, I had a talk with him. What you say? Say, I take all the charges you got. Mm. If you could walk away free and put it on me, goddamn right. So is that so, what boys giving you shit about because you put it on? No, nah, hell no. Nah, okay. Nah, nah. Don't nobody even know about that. I just volunteered. This <laughs> <laughs> Don't nobody even know about that. I'm just being honest. Yeah. That's the only time. Mm. It's you. I done never said or gave no information about nobody because that's my cousin, my big cousin. Mm. He was dead and he told me that it was okay. That it was okay. <laughs> what do you think about that? that? That's what they're for. Snitch you on the dead. So? Listen, as long as you're not putting something crazy on him like pedophilia, you know what I mean? Rape, like as long as you're not making that person out to be if, if, if what he's being accused of, everybody knows he used to do on a regular. So if he's being accused of carrying a gun, yeah. he's being accused of robbing a store, he's being accused of shooting somebody. I don't see why he wouldn't take that charge for you. If he's in heaven or he's in hell, he's probably going, yo, put that shit on me. It's not going to affect me. In That's right. Way. That's right. You get to live free. You get to be with your family. You get to be with your kids. We should absolutely be snitching on the dead. 100%. Why was this ever an issue? Look at that again. This is the issue. Get Again. your goddamn pussy out my face. Again, she said munch. Look, Get out of here. Yo, she called you a munch. Why do Matt? Wait. Yo, she called, <laughs> yo, she called you a munch. <laughs> she said you're an eater. You eat it for lunch. Why do married men always got to fight off no. advances? Unwanted yeah. advances. Say it, Wasabi. You thought I was feeling you? <laughs> Say it, Wasabi. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yo, she threw a <laughs> pussy at you, bro. That was crazy. Like a skunk. Just back that shit up and say, eat it. Yo. <laughs> yeah, but... Yo. <laughs> I think you can say that one. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know. I don't think you can say that one. <laughs> That's true. I think you just gotta say oh, oh, it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Nope. Um, listen, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this. I, why? I agree with it in theory. I just don't like playing with the dead. And I don't know if I don't even know how that works, because I would think that if you got caught with a gun, would it matter if the person who owned the gun was dead? Because possession is nine attempts of the law. So usually when you get caught with a gun, the police are like, oh, that's yours. Oh, the way I assumed uh, it, it was going is that the person that was dead was alive when they were caught together. Yeah. So, so, so for example, me and you are caught. God forbid I die. Well, let me put that on you. God forbid you die. God damn, don't put that on me. This well, is like, a hypothetical. All right, Alex. Okay. The three of us are together. Yeah. God forbid Alex dies, right? Jeez. We all got arrested together. Oh, you mean, we're, okay. See, I didn't know that. See, I didn't, I didn't understand the context. That's what so I... So there was a dead body in the car. <laughs> this guy this guy's crazy bro this guy <laughs> what? this guy that's not... this guy is absolutely <laughs> what? crazy bro what that's not what happened this guy is one of the craziest people <laughs> yeah, i ever met yeah. my entire life you gotta know that that <laughs> is not what the fuck we're talking i swear that's what, what it sounded hate, like what i hate is how you were like oh i got it here's, <laughs> hey oh i got it now here's the dumbest thing ever said by anybody ever <laughs> Hey, I got it. It didn't sound like that to you. <laughs> Son, I understand your sock drawer now, bro. <laughs> I, <ain't gonna> <laughs> I understand your sock drawer, bro. I think you confused after seeing that doggy pussy. <laughs> that <laughs> motherfucker, that man. Threw you for a he second. threw that tail up. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine dogs talking to each Damn. other. Y'all was with her, yo. She threw that tail she up, threw yo. That tail up. <laughs> you said you want some wasabi on that. You want some wasabi on the tuna? <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh man. Fly. Explain to me what the fuck y'all meant though. Okay. The three of us are out here, right? Yeah. We get arrested together. There was a gun in the car. Yeah. Right? Few weeks later, yeah. Al dies. God forbid. We still got this charge for the gun. You and I yeah. talk to our lawyer. Our lawyer's like, yo, one of y'all are dead. Just say it was his gun. Yeah. You guys are clean. 
they could charge him, but he's dead, so they're not going to charge you. Everybody's good. Hmm. That's what I assumed it was. Oh, yeah. listen, I'm not mad at it in theory. I'm just saying I don't like to play with the dead like that. That's all. So you wouldn't do it if you were him? Come on. Uh, think about your four daughters, bro. I don't know. I think really about don't. Your four daughters, bro. I really, I really, I'm be honest with you, I don't know. I don't know what I would do in that situation. I'm not mad at it, though. I mean, listen, now that I know it can be, it's a possibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are adding that to that repertoire if they ever need it. You know? Yes, 100%. Who to my guy, Tip? The only, the only thing about this is like people have been trying to paint a narrative of Tip for years. So now they're trying to use this to say, see, see? He snitches. It's like, see, shut blah, the blah, fuck blah. up, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah, off yeah. my guy, man. My guy does a lot for people, man. My guy does a lot for, you know, the city of Atlanta. And like, he, I don't think Tip gets his credit at all mm. for the stand up individual that he is. Mm. Um, What else we got? All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage your audience, and sell anything, your products, your content, you create, and even more. You could do your time. You could sell your time on there. Guys, if you have a business, you need a place for it on the internet. The internet is where the people are, and you need that to be your landmark store right there on the internet. Make sure you do it and build that website with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule and sell that time, okay, by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, or newsletters. Create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive sales. Stand out in any inbox with the Squarespace email campaigns. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site colors and logo. Built-in analytics measure the impact of every cent. Use those analytics and insights to grow your business. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot with the offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase. Now let's get back to the show. Let's do some asking idiots. Let's do some asking idiots, Taylor. What we got, what we got, what we got. Alex Boss 34 says, how do you weigh Doing what you love versus making money. You do what you love, you will make money. I am a stern believer in that. If you do what you love, it won't even feel like work. And by the time the money starts rolling in, you're going to be looking at yourself in the mirror and looking at all your people saying, I cannot believe we get paid to do this shit. Yeah. You know, I think about that. All. I, remember, I remember one time back in the day, you looked at me when we were busting up some checks. And you said, oh, he said, this shit is like me printing money, man. I can't <laughs> believe this shit, man. Can you believe this shit? The reality is no, I cannot. Nope. I'm just being honest. That's how I feel about my whole life. I cannot believe this shit. When I look at my life, I'm like, whoa, I can't believe this shit. And that goes for everything across the board. It don't matter if it's Breakfast Club, Black Effect, Brilliant Idiots, my my family, my publishing company, my book publishing company at Simon & Schuster. Boston Dog Lips? No. SBH Productions at Audible, you know, businesses I do. It's all unbelievable to me. And it's all because I genuinely love what I do. I get, I make money doing what I love to do. And guess what? I did it from the, I did it for the love initially. Yep. And it turned into what it's turned into. And I will not stop having fun. The, the moment I stop having fun, stop. the moment I stop loving it is when I'm going to stop doing Facts. it. Facts. Agreed. Cookie Man 1 says, is the pod going to release at a certain date and time when the reintroducing begins in 2023? That is the goal, Cookie Man 1. It is going to release at a certain date and time. It is. That's the goal. It, we're not going to say it. But it is. Yeah. That's the goal. You act like we want to be late. We don't want to be late. Like, we be, we we start this, like, yo, we recording, we try to record. Damn. Damn, huh? You know what she found? Man, why you got a white it says, it says, here's It says, here's what I found. Brilliant Idiots with Charlemagne the God and Andrew. Mm. Mm. Damn. How serious? You know what the fuck you was talking about? Serious, like, don't you even know? lie right now. But, but we do try. We try to be on schedule. We do. We just... We're busy guys. Y'all, we busy, man. We busy, man. But I think also having a new studio and like both of us just trying to lock in a time and prioritize that time will make it easier. There's going to be weeks where it's not that way, but we're going to do our best. 
We're going to do our best. Oh, this is a good question. X to the Z says, Andrew, we're talking having a child in the future. Do you feel your comedy will change? I hope so. I hope my comedy evolves. I don't ever want to be doing the same shit over and over again. I think the 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 true testament to having a great career is is continually evolving. And I think those are the people who last the longest. Uh, I think a lot of times you almost see creators becoming like caricatures of themselves. Like they're doing an impression of themselves. So they're not tapping into what's real. They're tapping into what was working what for them works. all those years. Yeah. yeah. So I hope I'm like excited for the life change. Like I almost feel like I've spoken about everything. I've said everything I want to say. Like I'm at this point in my life where I want to digest new things and I want to put myself in more uncomfortable situations. Like the thing about comedy is it oftentimes comes from uncomfortable situations. The thing about money is it creates comfort. So you need to have discomfort for good comedy. All the funny stories we tell on this podcast are from uncomfortable shit happening. And um, that's why your comedy is going to be so great because you're going to, I mean, and it's going, it's going to happen naturally. You're going to, you're going to hear more marriage stuff from you. Yeah. You're going to, when you have kids, you're going to hear kids stuff from you. Yeah. I already hear you saying, you know, raising a, having a dog is way easier than raising a child. Yeah. yeah, yeah you know I mean, that just yeah. sounds like an Andrew show take. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so it's going to be fun. Yeah. I'm excited for it, man. I think that's cool. And it's also cool to like get older with all the people listening. Like we've been doing this for a decade and I don't want to continue chasing fucking the youth. I don't ever think that that's good. I think Never. that you have to evolve with the people who listen and then be an inspiration for the youth. They should tap in and they should be like, oh, this is what is this is what a cool set of adults are. This is what cool family man. This is what I aspire to be. Like when I was younger, I was watching Chris Rock and I was like, oh, wow, that's a cool way to think of it as an adult, be in a relationship, right. all these things. So, yeah, I'm very excited for it. And thank you for asking. Um, El Nino Pepin O says, Charlemagne the God. Char Sorry. Sabi. Sabi, what you doing? Wire. No. Sabi, come. Um, El Nino Pepin Zero says, Charlemagne the God, who would you rather let clap them cheeks? DJ Envy or Andrew Schultz? Ooh, this is this is a really big question here. Disrespectful question, though. Why? Because do I look like a bottom to you, bro? But this is really a size thing. It's not a personality. Nah, bro. Don't play me. I ain't no bottom, bro. Oh, you're top? Easily power top energy over here, bro. Really? So you're just wasting that thing? Taylor, what? You can't say it's big and it don't want to be a bottom. That, that's what I'm saying. It's a waste. Taylor said, I cannot say that I'm thick and don't want to be a bottom. That makes zero sense. Wait, 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 wait. wait no, wait, it wait, doesn't. Wait. Well, you got all them cheeks for what? For people to look at. And be nah, enticed bro. by, nah, you know what I'm bro. saying? This ain't a wax museum. You look, you get to look at this and be enticed by it, but nah, you don't get to clap nah, it, bro. You nah. better turn around. No, you know what I'm saying? No, turn around. No, oil up your ankles. Let your Tim's tap. Whoa, all right. <laughs> what you talking about, bro? Disrespect me. I don't me. even know what that means, my cheeks. bro. I am. I got power top energy and y'all yeah. know it no nah, that's a waste that's like getting a bbl and nobody hits it from the back dummies <laughs> <laughs> right like the fuck the bbl bbl for stands for be back later bro i figured that <laughs> out yo. why why you've been y'all been using the term wrong for a long time because okay. that's what happens you go to the dominican republic yeah you get some shit done you come over here eat whatever the fuck you want don't work out and that's why they say you'll be back later oh <laughs> so really? you gotta go right back to the dr and get your shit done all over again Wait a minute. Do you know women who have gained tons of weight after having a fatty? Yes. Really? Yes. Why? Because they don't fucking sustain it. They don't do everything that they need to do in order to motherfucking keep the body that they just went to go get paid for. Oh, it's so no. stupid. Oh, no. Damn. Do we, uh, know, do we know a girl that did that? Uh, I don't think I know it. Scroll down some more, Taylor. Not, not who I'm thinking of? Nah, she's working out still? That's a good idea, the corner. That's why I'm not going to say it out loud. What? Uh, oh, this was good. No, this we can end on this one. This is a good one. Mm -hmm. This hurt my feelings, and I ain't even no comedian. Mm -hmm. The monster says that we should buy Caroline's and open up the Brilliant Idiots Comedy Club. Y'all can do it. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I think we leave that last line out. No, I'm not reading that last line, bro, bro. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that last line is wild, bro. Wow. Wow. What do you think, man? I'm good. What? You gonna let this car you wouldn't want Carolines? No, I don't fuck with Carolines. Oh, you don't do Carolines? 
No, the the guy there who would uh, block me from the New York Comedy Festival. Who's the guy there? Lou Ferranda. Really? Yeah. So now his club is going out of business. Isn't it funny that people who be blocking me be going out of fucking business? <laughs> isn't that isn't that funny? Doesn't that give you a chuckle? <laughs> isn't that funny? <laughs> Comedy Central, Caroline's. You know what I mean? Comedy Central like, ain't going out of business. Yeah, others, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Their stand up is done. Ain't no more stand ups coming out on on Comedy Central. Man, that is so fucking funny. I'm man. just saying, is it? I see, I see a trend. That's, that's I'm with you, I'm bro. Saying. I be I'm feeling the same way. My God, don't play about me, bro. My God, don't play about I, me. I, and that's why I don't even be tripping, man. I be, you know, people do certain things to you, and they, you know, they they try to block you from things and Mm-mm. get certain campaigns going. Mm-hmm. I just sit back and watch, like, yeah, watch mm-hmm. what happens. And then next thing you know, you see headlines like this. I try to help them. I don't feel good about it. Yeah. I don't feel good about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it, when they're doing things to me, I'm like, why are you doing this to us? To you, so- you ain't doing nothing to Say me. It. Say it. Why are you doing this to us? Say now, it. Say it. You know God don't play about me. I'm going to be good. But that guy? But then again, that could be arrogance on our part, right? And that could be ego on our part. Because the reality is, if they're doing you like that, that just might be who they are. So they're probably doing a whole bunch of people like that. So yeah. that's just a bunch of energy coming back to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know that about Caroline's. I'm sorry that happened to you, but I've I saw you at Caroline's. I've seen some great. I performed there. That, that, great. Caroline's one of my favorite places to go and watch comedy. Iconic New York venue. And you know I don't go nowhere. And and even prior to like me just going to Caroline's, like Wendy Williams used to do a Wednesday night at Caroline's, mm-hmm. and I that that was one of my first New York experiences. Like when I first started, when I first moved up here to New York. That was the thing. Like, yo, Caroline's Wednesday night. You got to be there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I would be there. And that's how I met a lot of these, you know, people in New York on the comedy circuit. The T.K. Kirklands, the Rob Stapletons, mm-hmm. you know, the Drew Frazier's. Like, I met all of them, you know, when they was doing Wednesday nights at Caroline's. And then over the years, I watched all of my friends. Like, that was the thing. I watched Kevin. Like, yo, I'll never forget when Soul Train didn't perform well and then Kevin had that sitcom on NBC that ended up getting canceled and so he decided to get back into the comedy clubs and that's all you kept hearing Kevin Hart killing in these comedy clubs Kevin Hart killing these comedy clubs selling out these comedy clubs and then it was this one big weekend he had at Caroline's where he had like 14 shows I'll never forget we backstage this was like 2010 maybe yeah 2009 2010 we backstage and him and Duvall was arguing like they always do. And I, and I tell this story all the time because it's real. Kev goes, they about to say my name. They about to announce me. This club's going to go so crazy and I'm not going to be able to hear you anymore. And so as soon as he said that, he's like, come to the stage, Kevin Hart. Crowd goes crazy. Kev just winks and walks off. <laughs> but think about that. You know how much 14 shows in a weekend oh, is at Caroline's? I mean that is, but that's how that's how everybody knew Kevin had arrived. Unbelievable. So yeah. in in a lot of ways, when you see somebody do a set at Caroline's and they got a four show weekend, six show weekend, yeah, they've arrived. You know what I mean? Dude, Akash Singh, Akash just sold out Caroline. Sold out the whole weekend. That's right. Five shows sold out. That's at right. Caroline's. That's right. Yeah. That, but that's that 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 right there. When I saw I saw you post that, I'm like, oh, Akash is here now. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So it's just some of those moments. Like that's that's what I look at Caroline's as. So I'm. This is the iconic headlining venue in New York. It was for years where I saw all these guys. You saw all these guys. Yeah. I, is it was unbelievable. It was like a rite of passage as a comic to like headline Caroline's. And I think it's a recession proof business for the most part, unless it's a pandemic where people can't be out. But yeah. even during a recession, there's certain things people are going to spend on date night at a great comedy show with a fire comedian there all weekend. You yeah. going, bro. Yeah. You going. Especially tough times, you're going to want some laughs, you know? So, I mean, there I'm, are other great comedy clubs in the city that you could go catch headliners at. Gotham Comedy Club is fantastic. Yeah. And then great showcase shows in the city. You go check out New York Comedy Club, the Comedy Cellar. Like, yeah. There's so much comedy going on right now in the city, so. I love all of them. I yeah. love all of them. It's interesting. It's going to be very interesting to see New York without Caroline's, though. Yeah. I'm not going to front. Like, that's going to be very, 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 very interesting. Um, That's all we got. Yes, sir. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. (laughs) 